It took Tony Storm becoming box office to become box office. Let's wind the spool back to before the opening credits and observe how the girl from the Gold Coast entered her golden age in AEW. It was in the final days of 2021 that Tony Storm voted with her feet, fresh off a losing effort against SmackDown Women's Champion at the time, Charlotte Flair, a feud that saw her pie-faced metaphorically and literally. On December 29th, it was reported that Tony Storm had requested her release from WWE and was almost immediately granted it, something that she told Renee Paquette on her podcast that she hadn't planned on doing when she woke up on that day. Tony also told Renee that in her four years in WWE, she felt like there had been a disconnect stating, I didn't feel that appreciated and I just felt like at times they didn't have very much respect for me. They just crushed my love for wrestling. It just wasn't even wrestling anymore. You're not even allowed to say wrestling. And this led to Tony saying goodbye after her final match for WWE, a house show in Washington where once again she lost to Charlotte Flair, the curtain came down on Tony Storm's WWE show. From here, Tony Storm went radio silent for the first half of the year. After joining OnlyFans, she reportedly made over £10,000 in her first hour of going live. God, Tony, mate, get that bag! The rumour still starts turning once again, though, about Tony's return to wrestling. Fightful Select said that Tony was almost definitely bound for All Elite Wrestling, and many on the inside are saying that Tony Storm was highly regarded within Khan's kingdom of Cobra Clutches long before. Those reports proved true. True. And in March of 2022, she burst onto the scene, defeating the Bunny in the opening round of the Owen Hart Foundation Tournament. This was accompanied shortly after by the classic brick wall backdrop and the All Elite Declaration. The storm had taken land in AEW. Now, she didn't win the Owen Hart tournament, but she was immediately thrown into the mix at the top with the likes of Dr. Britt Baker and then AEW Women's Champion Thunder Rosa. When Thunder was forced to step away for surgery, Storm bested Hikaru Shida, Britt Baker and JB Hater to become the interim AEW Women's Champion at All Out. Less than a year after she'd sought new horizons, Tony Storm found her place in the sun, at least in the interim. In the media scrum following that title win, Tony Storm alluded to her interregnum leadership of the AEW women's division, commenting, it's not ideal, but Thunder Rosa says she's injured. And when she says she's not injured, she can come back and lose to me, and that will be the end of that. Whilst these spicy words could be construed as building heat for that eventual throwdown to determine the one true champ, some believe there was some legitimate beef sandwiched in that statement. See, the original plans for AEW All Out would have seen Thunder Rosa drop the title to Tony Storm. However, it was announced by Thunder Rosa herself in the run-up to the already announced match that she would not be able to compete. Now, Rosa had reportedly offered to vacate the championship and a new champion be crowned on that night. But since Tony Khan had one interim title reign that year, you may as well make it too. Uh, this also all comes at a time where Thunder Rosa's backstage conduct has very much been brought into question after a series of unfortunate events both inside and outside of the ring. This includes allegations made against Thunder Rosa of sandbagging opponents, one that Thunder Rosa very cleverly turned into a t-shirt design. I'm actually surprised at those comments by Tony Storm with all that gossip goulash being stirred, weren't more highlighted. It's, it's almost like something else at that AEW All Out media scrum got people's attention instead. But for the life of me, I, 
I can't think of what that might have been. Uh, any hopes of Thunderstorm were blown off course by a scrappy Sertonian. Jamie Hayter defeated Tony Storm in a wildly well-received match at full gear. A short while later, it was revealed that Thunderosa was nowhere near ready to return to action. So Hater and retroactively our Tony had the asterisk removed from their reigns as women's champion. Being told your reign actually does count after it has already ended does seem like a bit of a slap in the face. <laughs> what a pittance. This led to a gear change in 2023. A new alliance was formed with fellow ex-WWE stars in Soraya and Ruby Soho. The outcasts, armed with spray paint of bad intentions, raged against the AEW women's locker room to promise housebreaking and humbling of all the young starlets. The idea being that because they'd seen the bright lights of WWE, these three had to put the home grown all elite talent in their place. So week by week, Soraya, Ruby and Tony would face off against youngsters like Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale and inevitably beat them up and several others for having the audacity to even exist. Now, now it's not the worst idea for a faction, providing there is a roadmap that sees these big headed ring bells get beat by the newbies at the very end. But we wouldn't see that. The road would lead to AEW Double or Nothing, where Tony Storm would become a two-time women's champion, defeating Jamie Hayter after the champ had suffered an outcast flavored beating. The reality was, that Jamie was working hurt and she needed time off for surgery. So instead of casting doubt on Tony's validity as champ with yet another interim reign and wanting the story that played off the nastiness of Tony's new gang, a three minute cluster was crafted to bring the belt back into the eye of the storm. It became apparent that there was no real long term plans for the outcasts as a group. Ruby Soho got embroiled in a mini set too with Dr. Britt Baker and Sir Soraya got enlisted briefly by Chris Jericho as a teammate, all while Storm preserved and persevered as women's champion, until she was shockingly unseated by Hikaru Shida on the 200th episode of Dynamite. Uh, things look set to crescendo for Tony once more at AEW's biggest show ever, All Elite at Wembley Stadium. Think about it, right? Jamie Hayter returning from injury and in front of 80,000 plus in her home country, takes down the outcasts and regains the AEW Women's Championship. What a moment! Jamie gets the title, the glory, and I don't know, the key to Southampton, a Saints goalie top and a box at St. Mary's Stadium. That dream, however, dissolved like that raccoon's candy floss in the lake that time. Jamie Hayter wasn't going to make it back in time to kick off at Wembley, so AEW, as they have done many times before, were forced to pivot in very dramatic fashion. And that is what led to the 200th episode of Dynamite and Tony Storm being very suddenly dethroned by Hikaru Shida. It led to a change in the mental state of our Tony. She becomes a bit mentally unglued at this point, walking around in her dressing gown and curlers, questioning what is next for her. She puts her focus into AEW's big night out at Wembley, believing that her triumphant comeback was coming in the country that she called home for many years. So confident of this, Tony entered the ring at All In to God Save the Queen as Nigel McGuinness on commentary described the poise of Ingrid Bergman. Sadly, this would not be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Rather, Tony would play intermezzo for her outcast colleague, Soraya, who would lift the AEW Women's World title in a four-way match on home turf. Cue the Knight family coming in to celebrate. Tony would describe describe her plans at All In as going tits up, saying Soraya went off script in my performance. A hint of what was to come. In the fantastic Portrait of a Star interview series, Tony Storm opens up to RJ City about her concerns about not being good enough anymore, becoming unraveled with every moment that this interview passes. It wasn't what she said, but how she said it, referring to the good old days and getting good write-ups in the trades, suggesting that upstairs, Tony was winding the clock back a hundred years, speaking a bit like a Hollywood 
star of the 1920s with the received pronunciation of a British accent. Now, all this metamorphosis would manifest as Tony would once again fall short in an AEW women's title match against Outcast's teammate Soraya, a move that would officially see Storm cast out of the Outcasts. After throwing shoes at Renee Paquette and RJ City with reckless abandon, Tony Storm is finally ready for her close-up, declaring herself timeless Tony Storm. Entering the ring in black and white with striking red lipstick, Tony was a picture-perfect Picture Palace production, a presentation inspired by golden age greats like Gloria Swanson and Louise Brooks. When not competing, she continued to further her new direction as an egotistical yet paranoid movie star. Absolutely commanded attention and absolutely demanded affection. Her promos are littered with a litany of Tinseltown terms and peppered with pretend positivity. Tony has proved to be a box office hit in the strangest of places as well. During a picture-in-picture -picture ad break on AEW, we got Lover's Lament, a silent movie starring Tony Storm, making its small big screen debut. This was on a night that saw AEW going up against NXT, and there were many that stayed on through the picture-in-picture -picture break to observe this rather bizarre yet beautiful pre-talky play out. It was incredible. This new character arc is something that she has cooked up alongside the man behind this Sunset Flip Boulevard, Tony Khan. Khan shared a vision for Timeless Tony Storm, a character that is different to everything else out there with Tony herself. Khan says that Tony Storm devoted her time to watching Golden Age Hollywood movies, truly sinking her teeth into every part of this persona. Khan has gone as far as to say that timeless Tony Storm will truly be timeless, referring to her as an immortal character in AEW, something people will remember for a long time. It's only going to keep getting better. That immortality was confirmed at AEW Full Gear when Tony Storm dethroned Hikaru Shida to become a three-time women's champion in AEW. Despite the obvious heel tendencies, the AEW faithful have absolutely fallen in love with timeless Tony Storm, and her becoming leading lady once more was undeniable. Already, Tony's Hollywood circle has encompassed other people, giving a new lease on life to Dr. Luther, of all people, now playing the role of Tony's butler, which he seems to be embracing, to be honest with you. It's also become a vehicle to introduce AEW fans to stardom starlet Mariah May, who has arrived in AEW in hopes to hang out with her Hollywood hero, Tony. When a character has the ability to raise others with it, then you know that you are on to a very, very good thing. AEW has a tendency, right, to bring new toys into their warehouse of roundhouses to much fanfare, and then almost immediately forget where they put them before going out to buy a new one. Tony Storm was very much at risk of metaphorically dropping down the back of the cupboard pretty soon after her debut. But this outstanding reinvention deserves a standing ovation. It has very much put her front and center in a very busy wrestling landscape. It's also a showcase of what Tony Khan's creative machine can create when they are focused and energized. Above all, it is a showcase of Tony Storm, somebody who always had the wrestling ability, but needed something that really pushed her ahead of the pack. It took the influence of the silent era to make Tony Storm louder than ever and to create something that is quite literally timeless. Stay safe, tits out, and watch for the shoe.